So, um, as it's obvious from the amount of stuff coming into my life and the fact that I'm on the low buy Discord, um, I have a bit of a problem with indie perfume right now. And I think that problem extends beyond indie perfume. Um, I'd say I have a bit of a shopping slash impulse control issue. Um, but currently, my issue is indie perfumes. Um, so I'm taking the next two months or so. Um, today is September 9th, I think. Um, and I'm going to be quite busy until November 10th or so, and then maybe a little bit after. Um, I'm going to be quite busy, so I think now is a good time as ever to actually formally put myself on a low buy, run it for about two months, and then see how I feel about afterwards. I've tried doing semi-structured planning before, but I've actually never fallen th uh, followed through with it. So um, I'm actually going to do it this time. Um, so usually what happens is I'm like, oh, well, I'll set up a budget or whatever. Or like, oh, I'll only buy from like XYZ releases and then I ignore my plan for the year because things are always exciting, things are always new. Um, but short term planning, I think, is maybe a little more realistic, especially if I want to do this semi regularly until I can figure out what my actual issues are, why I feel the need to buy so much. Um, and yeah, basically get my life into order in other ways. In the meantime, short term planning will do the trick for me, I think. Um, so not entirely sure about the dates, but like, let's pretend this is like 60 days or whatever. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to call this a low buy. And the goal is to not purchase anything um, other than plant. Now, um, I do expect to fail. Totally fine. Um, but I want to... Uh, fail forward, I guess. So, like, even if I fail, uh, maybe there's, like, contingencies around how I should feel and, like, to make sure that doesn't cascade to, like, buying one thing and then being like, oh, maybe I should just add this into my cart. Um, because as an international buyer, shipping is, like, the big thing um, and it leads to very, very tempting situations where I want to add more to my cart uh, to compensate for the cost or to buy in small amounts via a decanter where I'm not really paying for the shipping cost. Um, so, you know, for a point of reference, shipping is usually like 15 to $20 um, USD, and adding via decanter is about 40 cents USD. Now, the problem with that is like the decant cost is actually quite expensive. So even though I'm like saving shipping costs, I'm often paying like an additional twenty to thirty dollars actually just to get my stuff because it's so heavy or it's worth a lot. Um, and the decants themselves are actually probably like 1.5 times how much the um, raw material actually costs as well. So none of this is really cost savings. Um, it's just a workaround, like a mental workaround to thinking that I'm doing the smart thing when I really don't need to pre-purchase anything. Um, so that aside, I do enjoy the hobby. Um, I do genuinely enjoy the process. So I don't want to completely devoid myself, get jealous, um, accidentally slip up and like purchase a bunch of things to compensate. So instead I'll just set like um, things I'm allowed to purchase so I can look forward to them and um, I'll save a bit of money, hopefully, and it'll all be done within reason. And then again, I can reassess later. So what I'm thinking is um, things I'm allowed to buy um, plus a couple contingencies. Um, so basically I have an idea. I've been in the hobby for quite some time, so I know what releases are coming, which ones I'm interested in, which ones I would like to buy directly from the brand, which ones I would like to get from a decanter. So um, things that I would like direct. Um, this actually involves my favorite scent, and it's... Um, a refill basically because I'm running actually quite low so I'm likely going to order something from Poesia at some point um, to get a 5 mil of my favorite scent um, and then there is likely going to be something in between the several releases that they're doing that's going to tempt me or um, like a discount will roll out or sometimes they do like free pile of freebies um, so what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to ignore all the freebies that Poesy does. Like, and I will make sure I don't buy anything on those weeks um, or those weekends where they do those offers. Like, get a free scent if you purchase this or um, get a free bundle pack um, or like free sample pack with the exception of if I know exactly what that scent is and I wanted it anyways. Um, then it just makes sense to do that. But otherwise, like, if I've never even heard of the scent, um, or if it's a new scent that they're giving out for free, I'm not going for it. So, no freebies. Um, that are, that are, like, new to me. Um, on the other hand, because I'm making an order, because shipping is about, I want to say it's, like, $18 now direct, um, it makes absolutely no sense to pay what is about um, $40 for 5 mils of perfume. However, there are other things I like in their catalog, things I'd happily get 2 mils of and get more of. Um, and yeah, so I think this is actually going to be my big splurge. This is like my splurge item for the two months. And um, I'm only going to actually make this purchase if I see like at least $50 worth of stuff I want to get directly. Um, because if not, I can just wait. Um, I have enough of my favorite scent to last for quite a while, and it's likely going to stick around in their catalog actually past my low buy time period. Um, so I need to make a minimum purchase of $50 of the stuff I really, really want. Like, um, if um, Firelight Study comes back out, I might get a 2 mil of that, because I actually have gone through um, quite a bit of it, um, as in I've actually finished up. <laughs> um, three and a half mils worth and I'd like happily get more of that though I actually strike that I have a rollerball of it hmm so there's nothing in their general catalog that I need more of or really want more of um there's one scent in their general catalog I've been wanting to try for years um, so I'd be happy to include that in that $50 count, but I actually think it might be a little tricky um, to find enough stuff for me to warrant um, $50 if I don't find anything by the time um, my favorite scent goes down. I'm just going to directly add it to an Ajevi bundle so I don't have to pay for shipping, or at least I can pay for US shipping. So I need to find at least a certain amount in their catalog at a given time. For me to justify the shipping cost. So that's going to be my only direct buy um, during this this time period. Um, this may not be true. One exception um, is I've been meaning to buy from Kisei for quite some time and I didn't buy from them because I keep failing my no buys slash low buys to myself. Um, so they reopen, I believe, October 11th or 15th or so. Now, if I've purchased, like, nothing before then, um, I will be okay with buying directly from them only if they have a sale. Um, they tend to do a, a small sale, like, very small percentage, really, um, when they release a new scent. And I do have a list of scents I would like to try from them, as well as scents I would actually like to purchase more of. Um, so I'm probably going to buy a mix of 3 mils to 5 mils, um, and their shipping's like very reasonable um, to where I am, and this is probably going to be the only exception. If they have a sale, and if I've purchased nothing, then I will purchase something from here. Uh, that's it. So those are my only two buys. Um, if I've purchased nothing. Uh, now, full disclosure, I did make a relatively small decant purchase yesterday with knowing I was going into this. Um, it's funny because the um, currency actually kept switching on me so I could see like the true cost of what it would be. And um, yeah, working in USD is really easy to fool yourself if you're international. Um, you forget how much stuff actually costs. Um, so I ended up getting like four decants. Um, last night, and that is like the last of the purchasing um, during this time period with these exceptions listed below. Um, Poesy, if there is enough in the catalog that I want all at once shipped, or I'll just get the singular scent, 
before it gets discontinued for the rest of the year. Um, and again, it's likely to stick around for a while unless there is a supply chain issue um, or they just decide to not bring it back, which I guess I'll get nothing. Um, yeah. So during this time, these two cents, um, I am not going to get any decants from Poesy unless it makes sense. And I feel like there's going to be nothing else for the rest of um, the time period. And Black Cut Cuddles is available, and I'll just get that directly forwarded to the decanter. Um, now, in terms of decants, um, there's no point lying to myself. Um, I'm going to be very, very interested in the Pals Weenies, which is their Halloween collection, um, and their Liliths, which I kind of hate because I'm not a fan of having art of humans on my stuff, never mind children. Um, so at most, I'd probably get like two to three decants of Lilith, just because I really enjoy the scent profiles, um, historically, and I'm very happy to not get this at all. Um, because like, it's, it's significantly more expensive than the rest of their collections, um, and it's quite frustrating actually. Um, so this is like, if something really, really vibes with me, I have nothing like it. Historically, I like all the notes that I've tried in it. Sure. Okay, fine. Um, and then in terms of their Halloween-based scents, um, same thing. I'm gonna be a little more flexible. Three to five decants are okay. That sums up to be the cost of one full bottle. Um, and like, that's within reason. Uh, a couple other things that are likely to come up during this time that I'm gonna be really interested in. Um, Nocturne Alchemy has lately been an excellent hit for me. Um, frustrating because their stuff is like a little weird on pricing and decants are astoundingly expensive. Um, I think that's part of because, you know, you're also paying for the work of the decanting. Um, however, uh, it is possible um, I might be able to get in on a decant circle with this. Um, and at the very most, I think I would allow myself to get three decants. Um, just keeping it reasonable these scents, um, and they have to all be the new scents, like nothing from the old scents because it's unlikely they'll come back for a while and there's no point liking a scent that you're gonna only ever have a limited amount of or spend lots of time on. So only um, three uh, new scents at maximum. I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, let's see. I don't think Black Friday is in this timeline <laughs> that I thought of, um, but if for some reason I've forgotten when it is, and um, Phantom has a sale, it might also go into here. Um, to be honest, I don't think I'll be getting anything anyways, because the only thing I want from them currently is um, sample sizes. Their sample sizes are huge, so it's highly, highly unlikely unless there is a sale on their sample sizes, and they haven't had a sale for, I think, a year now. Um, so if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, I guess I'll wait another year. I've already waited two years to get Phantom directly, and their shipping costs have increased in that time period. Um, so it's a bit like, it's not good thinking. Like I'll be probably, more, I'll probably have more um, capital to spend in the future. But um, if there is like a pretty decent sale for samples, um, I might grab like five at most and I'll probably actually have them forwarded instead of paying direct shipping if it works out. Um, but their samples are pretty large. Um, and I might actually, as an alternative, I might get this from swaps instead. I don't think buying direct actually makes sense um, because of the cost. And a lot of people do actually have phantom samples or can make decants of them. So I don't think I will be buying this from direct at all. So let's make a swap category. Um, am I allowed to get anything from swaps? Good question. Um, hmm. I think it would not be unreasonable to do one swap a month. Like, that sounds reasonable to me, preferably within the country. If not, I can get it forwarded. Again, I pay like $5 for the shipping within the US and then a processing fee. Um, and it ends up being like an okay price. Uh, and the main appeal of it is typically that the products are so are slightly discounted so that like 
when you are paying for it, it's not more than you would have paid for the original new product. However, I think I should only be allowed to get things from swaps if they were things on my wish list already. And I do have like a wish list of about like 10 or so things. Um, so if I see those things, I'm allowed to get them and I should not buy them because shipping does also cost money if it's like the only thing I want. Um, unless it's like a bottle B palo, then I'll go ahead and get that because I've been looking for it for a really long time. Um, but I refuse to pay more than the original price for it. So from swaps, I think I'm allowed to get things from my wishlist items. And to make things sensible, I should at least be ordering like $20 of product plus $5 of shipping. Um, but again, I'm going to limit myself to at most once a month to keep this reasonable um, because it actually racks up really quickly if I buy too much um, in the swap value because again that changes shipping, it changes insurance um, so it's a bit of like a fine line of how much stuff I want to get from swaps and they also like often come with freebies which really increases the weight of my package as well which like I have nothing against freebies this is like a international person problem um, yeah I think I have a good plan um, I'm gonna write a list of like brands I'm not allowed to buy from <laughs> That's just gonna make my life easier um, to remind myself like these brands I'm not allowed to buy from and if I do I need to readjust this um, so really it looks like I'm gonna be making maybe one purchase during this time maybe two in late October I would definitely have to push this into like whenever the sale is happening they might have one for American Thanksgiving um, so that's actually, which might be after the time period. Um, so American Thanksgiving, um, I am allowed to get three rounds of decants. I don't think I'm going to get anything from any other brands. Um, oh, I forgot one exception I wanted to make. Okay, so the other exception I want to make is um, from a from Pulp Fragrance because they have had the best hit rate from you altogether. I think their work is really cool. And more importantly, um, they're gonna start doing free pickups. So if they do release anything during this time period um, that warrants a five sample bundle, anything below that, like the cost doesn't shake out very well for myself. But if I see the opportunity to get at least five cents in a bundle um, of a sample pack, which Unless they release quite a lot of stuff. I don't think it's actually going to happen. Um, but if it does, during this time frame, which I also don't think it will, um, then I'm allowed to get a sample pack. But um, there is nothing I want that is um, that I want to full-size from them. I've actually full-sized every single thing I really like from them already. Um, and I've even got backups of the things I really like, so there's no, there's no reason why I should get a full-size. But because shipping is free, and because I greatly, greatly enjoy the artist, that is okay for me. So during this time, um, I can get one sample pack if it's warranted. There are some scents that they have I'm just not interested in at all. Um, at some point I thought I really wanted to have like the full collection, every single scent. I've decided I don't. There's just some scents that don't vibe with me. Um, and they just sit around, all I want to do is give them away, and so I'm slowly trying to give away the things I don't like. And like, honestly, I've accidentally gotten a couple duplicates, um, my own fault, because I'm not keeping track of what I have properly. Um, so like, if they release five new scents that I'm genuinely curious about and think they will be future full-size contenders, then maybe I'll do that, and I'll pick it up directly. Or like, opt for free shipping. Or wait for a sale. Um, but I'm not in a rush for any of this. They're pretty good about bringing things back. Um, and I have actually not been a huge fan of their autumnal based scents, especially the foodie ones. I actually find them extremely realistic to the point where I don't want to wear them as, um, as fragrance. I'd rather have them in body products. Now, um, in a related vein, if their body products come back, for example, if, um, their dusting powders come back, I would like to try one like one um, again I can get that picked up for free um, and if I find myself entirely running out of the moisture mist which I do use regularly um, then I may pick up 
hopefully I'm hoping they start making larger sizes of it um, I did mention it they're like maybe um, so hopefully that would also be slightly cheaper if uh, just for packaging purposes so if I do run a moisture mist um, for obvious reasons if it's doing good for my skin in the weather um, I don't see why not um, of course, I'm just only going to exclusively buy scents I'm already familiar with and really like, uh, because that's a lot of product if you don't like it. Um, this is looking to be a lot of perfume. I think... Um... I'm hoping what happens is I actually think I'm going to reduce the number of um, Bee Pal weenies I get. I'm going to drop that down to two to three, um, but I will be allowed to get one or two leftovers because um, and this will be based on luck then. So like I can in my head mentally prioritize what I really want and things that I'm hoping have a tiny bit left over, and then like there's a huge fight for it, I'm unlikely to get it, um, and I'm not gonna be too disappointed if I don't. So this balances things out a little bit more. Um, yeah, um, I actually think, unless there's something really, really perfect here, um, I'm gonna nix the Pulp Fragrance sample pack. I don't need that. Again, there's very little um, FOMO with the brand. It's very likely things will come back, even if it takes a little while. Um, yeah, so I, I feel good about that. Um, it's only going to be body products that I pick up, and I'm not going to pick them up in any new sense, just scents I'm really familiar with. So I'm reasonably confident I'll be able to use them up within like their expiry date. Um, yeah, I think I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, it's more money, like, when I'm thinking about it, than I'd like to spend. For example, um, I have to spend at least $50 if I want to do things from swaps, um, because I'd be doing it twice a month at a max, um, at a maximum frequency, but a minimum cost. And then it'd be, like, at least a $50 order from Poesy, which would end up probably being closer to, like, 75 80 so it's, like, 130 USD already, never mind all these decants that I'm being okay with. Um... So, like, as a general budget, that sounds like maybe I should definitely not go over 200 USD, including shipping um, or add-on cost, for the next two months. Um, so, to think about that, I do actually owe a friend money for holding onto stuff for me, um, so that I'm going to include that cost in this estimate. Um, so, I'm going to keep track of every single thing I buy for the next two months, including that shipping cost. Um, that my friend needs to send to me because like I think that's gonna be 50 bucks um, right there $30 shipping unfortunate but true and um, About $20 is what I owe for um, Having a couple things on for me probably a little more actually um, So this will really affect how I want to do um, Whether or not I want to do the poesies during November or not. I might wait um I don't love their gift with purchase tier system when it comes to like Black Friday and Christmas deals. So I might just keep waiting. I might just pick up Black Eye Cuddles and like forget everything else. Maybe get one or two decants instead. Um, yeah, if it's... I might just do that. I think that makes more sense. I'm not in a rush to get any replacements. Um, with the rare exception of if they're like giving away a full size of black cat cuddles, I might, that might be the slightly more economical way to go um, if I'm feeling particularly tempted. Um, so I have a bit of a timeline for myself. It's a little messy, um, but I think we can do it, right? Phantom, I've been waiting on for a really long time. Keys, Kise, um, I've been waiting on for a very long time. I've tried a few of their scents, have not even finished the one mil samples of the stuff I really like. So like, this can wait. Most of these scents are scents I want to wear actually during summer, but if they have a Thanksgiving sale, um, I'll think about it. Um, I'll probably, what I'll do is probably add like five cents to my cart, see the cost, add the shipping, and be like, that's too much money. Um, but I am going to be in the States for a bit, so I 
like if it's reasonable to actually just ship it to where I'm going to be, then maybe that's a much better option for me. Um, but with smaller brands, it's a bit uh, janky with like how long it takes to actually ship out, depending on how busy they are, or like if the postal service is having crazy shenanigans. Um, and that's the other thing is I think with every year, um, the cost of postal service goes up a little bit, especially during the holiday season, and it sort of stays there. Um, so I'm really hoping to be done with shopping um, or to be really, really restrictive and thoughtful about my shopping with the cost of decants going up, with the cost of shipping going up. Um, obviously, brands within my country are also going to go up in cost, but um, the shipping usually doesn't hurt quite as much. Um, it does, but like, you know, if I can pick it up direct, amazing. Um, there's no shipping concerns. And... Um, yeah, I think with perfume being a luxury product, it feels lux less luxurious the more you have. Um, so this is in line with like trying to de-stash a bunch of things I'm not really fond of, and I can't recall what they smell like off the top of my head. Um, if that happens, I think it can go. Um, so yeah, but de-stashing is also a pain, which is the other reason I don't want to acquire too many new things. Because um, like, surprisingly... Um, Limited edition B-Pals are actually kind of hard to get rid of unless there's like a huge clamor for them. Um, so I've had a couple since that have stuck around for way too long. Um, <laughs> genuinely like kind of absolutely horrific, but so expensive that I feel weird throwing it out. And if there's an odd chance that someone wants it at some point, I would like to pass it to them for a discounted price. Um, so we can both feel better about ourselves. Anyways, um, let's talk about brands I'm not allowed to buy from that I have a history um, of wanting to buy from, but not loving, or also things that I can wait for. So, um, off the top of my head, these are the things I purchased recently. So, um, it's just, like, not a lot of sense. Um, Astrid. Um, got some decants. No more Astrid's for the next few months, at the very minimum. I'm hoping we're in the next, for the full year. Um... I, their gum rods are great, but like, I don't actually always want to smell like food, astonishingly. I think I'm, I've shifted slowly out of that phase. I still love it. I like to smell it, but I don't necessarily want to wear it. Um, maybe this will change as like cool weather actually hits, but I have plenty of gourmands to keep me happy during that time. So no more Astrid's. Um, I didn't even buy a single one. No black hearted tart. Um, I really like some of their scents. However, I don't love their formula, um, like texturally there's something a little weird about it, and um, I'd say about 1 out of 10 is like really good. That's a pretty low hit rate for me, and the rest of them are good, but like don't want to wear them, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, no more black hearted tar for the rest, probably for the rest of the year, if I can, if I can hack it. Um, no more osmofolia. Um, I have a mixed relationship with Osmofolia, um, both their sense and my experience with them, and I'm really excited for some of the new scents they're going to release, but I also think they're going to do well enough that they're going to stick around for a really long time in the catalog. Um, so I'm happy to wait, is basically how I feel about this. I'm happy to wait, I'm happy to split an order. Um, if I really love them, then like, I would want more than a decant or a sample. The sample sizes are also two mils, which I really like if I genuinely like something. So I'm going to wait for reviews. Um, in the meantime, I'm just going to wait it out. If they truly stick to a low FOMO um, cyclical catalog with occasional reformulations, then almost certainly these scents will come back next year and I can get them in a two mil sample, especially after all the reviews, um, which are kind of important. Um, same thing, like, no small brands, no Marari, historically they don't super work for me, um, nor, no sort of celery, um, I have, like, three scents I like from them that I never wear, I find them extremely overpowering, and I find them, I really love their descriptions, but I can enjoy their descriptions without actually smelling things, or I can smell from friends, no need to purchase those. What other brands am I not allowed to buy from that I generally historically like? Okay, so Frenet is another one. Um, they do actually have a couple scents I really want to try, um, but I don't love the way the brand operates. 
and I think the scent I want to try is gonna be around at least until after um, my like low buy cut off. Like there's a couple things I want to try from them and I think their sample size is perfect because it's like 1.5 mils and it's like almost a full size to me. Um, so this is a brand I might indulge in a bit if I succeed in my low buy and they have a sale because there are things I want to try but I'm not in a rush. Um, yeah, I'm not in a rush. So for now, it's fine. They'll probably release some more stuff, more to pick from. I can be like really decisive from all their new things. Uh -huh. I can't actually think of too many brands. Um, Smelly Yeti. I actually quite like a lot of their work, but they're closing. I need to stop buying stuff from them and I need to stop buying full sizes from them because it's a lot of perfume for a brand that's going defunct. Um, and I find that their base goes off, like their base oil um, does actually go off. So I've had a couple scents where they just did not smell good at all, like smells nothing like the description and I think they just went bad. Um, like either the fragrance components went bad or the carrier oil went bad. So there's no more smelly Yeti for me, not until the brand fully closes down. There's nothing I want from them so much that I want a full size of, um, as cheap as it is. This is not financial, this is like, well, I guess it's financial. If you don't use it up, it's a waste, right? Um, so yeah, I hope they do well, um, but I think I'm going to stop buying from them, and I should have done that a while ago. Um, just a couple like generic other brands. Um, Black Bakura, I don't, I have issues with the brand don't like it. Um, I have tried a couple of things from Decants, haven't loved them, so I'm fine with never trying anything from them again. Um, Strange South, um, I've had issues getting my orders, there's nothing I- there actually are things I love from the brand, but nothing lasts extremely long, and I find it very frustrating, um, and they have like a couple like steep steep sales throughout the year, and I'm happy to wait for those if there is anything I want by then. Um, and they don't even do samples anymore, like you have to get samples from a decanter, which it's unclear what carrier oil they use, um, so I'd just rather not get anything for a while until that becomes very clear. And... Do, 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 do. Oh, um, Arcana. <laughs> um, there is almost certainly going to be something I'm really, really intrigued by in the fall release from Arcana Wildcraft. This is my highest probability of failing my low buy rules. Um, nonetheless, I'm going to put it down. I'm going to try not to buy from Arcana Wildcraft. I'm definitely not going to be buying any full sizes, um, but there's like a non-zero chance if someone wants to split an order with me, I might get a couple samples, but I'm going to try really hard not to. I'm going to come up with reasons why I don't need it, um, try to remember that their scent descriptions are unbalanced, like they'll put things in certain order and you'll find that like a hint of mint is like the entire scent. Um, so yeah, I, I find them a bit, um, they don't quite align with what I like a lot of the times. And there's a few scents that I really, really love from them and they're actually rather unexpected. Um, it's like a very low hit rate actually with this brand. Uh, Craves? I... A lot of the scents I wanted to um, to get are actually being discontinued, and I have quite a lot of craves already. I don't think any version of a Christmassy thing will really appeal to me. Um, same thing, I might struggle a little bit with fall time, um, but again, I'm going to try really hard not to get anything. I have no need for layering notes. I don't like layering notes and I don't use them, so I don't know why I have them. So definitely no layering notes, and it's really frustrating. You can't get samples of this brand. Um, yeah, uh, I don't love the model that the owner has in terms of marketing um, and sales, so I'm, I've just been generally trying to avoid this brand in general, like I have bad associations, like nothing wrong with the perfumes themselves, just like generally bad associations with the brand because things aren't the way I expect them to be and I'm like in their Facebook group and I don't love what I see and it, it affects my overall perception and the overall impression I have the brand. So I try to remember that um, even if there are a couple things I really like from them. Um, of the multiple full size bottles I have, which is very embarrassing, um, I only like really love two or three of them and I don't ever wear them. So you know, like obviously 
this is not a good brand to full size for me um and always there are always always things for swaps like four dollars cheaper again you pay for shipping but at least you get the extended time to see more reviews come out um to determine whether or not you actually want something or if it was just a combination note that sounded astounding but in reality don't mesh well um this tray here am i forgetting oh Nui cobalt this is actually one of my favorite brands and the reason i forgot about them was because I own so much of their stuff at this point that I can start to pick out their accords. Like, they reuse a lot of accords. I don't need anything new from them for a while unless it's replacing something that um, I have and was previously discontinued. So there is one scent that they released somewhat recently um, that I meant to get a decant out to see if it was a replacement. And then I missed the decant circle window. And then I decided not to pay for shipping. So maybe if like the opportunity comes, I might literally just get the one sample um, as an add-on. Um, I'm just gonna put that here. But I think I'm not gonna get any of their new scents because they write really, really wonderful, charming um, descriptions. But I found recently that their preferred focus um, in like their repeat themes um, haven't worked out for me. I tried a lot of their dances last year I don't like a single one. Um, and like their Gamers and Geeks collection is really appealing to me, um, but I like the concepts more than the executions. Um, and I currently have way too many scents that are suited for gaming, so I don't need to replenish that. So I think... I don't even think there's anything I want to full size during this time period either. I have everything I really want from this brand in full size already. Um, with the exception of discontinued things and those are the only things I'd be looking for is like things to replace previous scents that have been discontinued um, Also not gonna get any possets. I really like them. I think the brand's gonna stick around for a while uh, and The retour decants are probably gonna get more expensive with time um, but this is a brand it's interesting because I don't want any full sizes from them. I just want like samples and really enjoy those samples, work through them, and then be done with it. That's it. Um, so I don't know how I feel about this brand because it is a, it, you can't sample directly from the brand. Um, their full sizes and shipping are very, very reasonable, but it's a lot of perfume if it doesn't work out. There's one scent I want from them but there's never enough from them I want full size to actually justify hitting their $75 free shipping mark. So I'm wondering if this might make sense for the next retour that had a lot of hits for me. Um, Cause I know one cent and that two cents off the top of my head that I want full sizes of and that's it. That's, that's not remotely enough. Um, obviously, like, you know, trying to get rid of free shipping is also silly, but it is- the shipping cost is so much that it's like a third bottle of perfume. So if I had a third bottle, it would make sense. But anyways, nonetheless, um, maybe I'll eventually find someone to split this with. For now, these two months, I'm not gonna get anything. There may or may not be a retour. There probably is. I think there's a Halloween one. And... It's fine. I actually still have a couple scents from that retour that I quite liked, and I'm gonna rethink about them, see how I like them. And then the retours are up for a really long time, so if I do actually want to get full sizes of anything, there'll be plenty available um, into November, so I can wait. Um, just gonna make a mental note to myself. Well, you can also tell I forgot about it up until like pretty, like a few minutes ago, so you know, like. It's not the end of the world if I miss it. I would- the only thing is I'd be extremely um, saddened if the brand closed at some point. That would be, I think, very sad. Um, but at the same time, you know, these things happen and I'm hoping it doesn't. I'm very much hoping it doesn't. Um, just peeking at my box of random samples. No alchemia for me. Not really interested in trying out their new scents. I like the brand. They're okay. Don't love the brand. Um, 
no death and floral got everything almost everything i wanted already from them in full size and i'm happy to sample from time to time from them but you know it's i've got a lot of perfume from them already um, unless i sell some and i think i think that might be it for now um I really can't think of anything I'm missing um, in terms of brands I don't want. There's, there's probably like several, like, and I didn't think of any of them. Maybe I'll regret the way I've structured my low buy. Um, but if you think about the cost of my low buy, it's actually quite a lot of money. Um, so I need to remember this is how much money I've allocated. And I shouldn't, really, really shouldn't be spending more than that if I have plans to consume what I own. Right, like this is definitely going to be a net positive um, if I actually use up that amount of money. So to um, bolster what I want to do, um, obviously um, the plan is to enjoy what I have. Um, oh, I forgot to make one exception. I am traveling a lot um, during this time. If I find something that's like incredible and I really want it like it's okay right if it's a niche perfume if it's like a full custom which I might have the chance to make with like a really well-known perfumer uh, I'm gonna get it because I'm not just paying for the scent I'm paying for the experience and I think I will treasure that a lot more than like an impulse buy from one of these brands right? if I'm there for every single step of the process now that's not a financially smart decision I'll put it out there um, but I think it will have a lot more meaning um, generally, most things I get from my travels, I find them very meaningful and I only get one of them to make sure I don't oversaturate the meaning. Um, but anyways, aside from that, I'm just gonna make a note for customs. Um, oh yes, no lurker and strange. I'm very irate at my experience with them. Perfumes are fine. Communication could be better. Um... But like, it's not a brand I want to go out of my way to support just because they're close to me. Um, same thing with like Stereoplasm. Like, um, I have enough from them. The things I like, I like. The things I don't, I don't. I just have too much. And they don't vibe with me remotely as much as some other brands. And I think they'll be fine without my support. And if the products they make don't appeal to sufficient people, it's not the consumer's responsibility to remedy their their financial situation <laughs> um you know i'm sure they have customers if they're still around uh so yeah so things uh, i'm gonna do during this two months is i actually have about three weeks of traveling um so that's gonna keep me really really busy um most of this is for work so i'll be quite busy the entire time i'll be very exhausted um i will probably you know, really get to know a couple scents, so I'll actually pack scents for the travel. Um, I might not wear them, this has happened in the past where I've packed scents and I haven't worn them just because I can't pull them out for some reason, that's fine. But like, knowing that I'll have something will be nice, like I'll bring a couple scents I really really love, um, or remind me of home or something. Um, I've got a couple swaps going on, I don't consider swaps to be part of the low buy. Um, I actually really need to send out a few packages I've prepped for people already, um, so I'm happy to swap. Um, I love smelling things that people specifically pick out for me, things I would have never considered. Um, and again, if they change my mind about any brands, I can wait until after my deal buy to really think about it. But I want to put some effort into sending out swaps um, that I said I would, and I really want to get out, So because I appreciate the people I'm sending it to as well. Uh, and I would love to make someone's day. So I'm gonna focus on those instead of purchasing. Like, I, I don't love over-the-top packaging, but I, these things are packaged and I just can't, I haven't sent them out yet. So I just need to do that. Um, and I'm gonna spend some more time on my other hobbies. I actually think I need a break from indie perfumes. Like, I think I will always love perfume, but currently the fixation is more on purchasing and the purchasing experience rather than experiencing the perfumes. So I'm gonna spend some time away from the forms in which I get new news. So that means I am going to hide some of the Discord channels I'm in. 
and not all of them, really just one particularly um, consumerist Discord. I'm gonna hide that and try not to check in on it. I probably will, but I will not unhide it, so to speak. Um, and I'm gonna indulge in some of my other hobbies. Um, I'm going to an event that involves um, stationery. I'm probably going to go to a plant-related event. Um, I'm gonna try really hard to read. Not even read more, just read. I spend so much time on Reddit that it is ridiculous. Um, so I need to get back into like regular reading books, content. I read a book about or read an article on propagation yesterday and it was the most delightful thing I've done in a really long time. Um, and it just reminded me that you can do things other than consume new reviews or read new listings, right? I could be creating, not well, but I could be creating products inspired by the listings versus buying them and hoping they are what I want, right? There's, um, you can enjoy the artistry without consuming it. Um, so more time and other hobbies and honestly I'm just gonna try not to stress by that's it uh, again I'm gonna be really really busy there's a big purchase I want to make and I'm waiting until mid to late October to make it um, because it's a hefty hefty purchase and I do this purchase every single year but I feel like the cost I've spent on it has gone up um, now there's good reasons for that but, you know, I'd rather get those things than the equivalent amount in perfume. Which means, after I make that purchase, I should probably actually go on a low buy from November to December as well, to offset the cost of that purchase. Um, because I have definitely not followed my planned, like, $100 per month, um like, hobby budget um, for the last few years. number of reasons for that, for me to address on my own. Um, but I think I'm gonna keep track of my feelings about this low buy somehow, try to be honest with myself and actually put effort into it. Um, unlike in the past where I, like, tuck in a notebook and I hide it in, like, the back of the pages and then never look at it until, like, three months later and feel really bad. Um, but I'm gonna try to be a little more active about this low buy because I think I'm gonna actually be planning for another low buy um, until December. Um, I don't spend a lot of money during the holidays. Um, the people around me understand that gifting doesn't have to be doesn't have to come with a large financial cost, and I t tend to like making things or um, being very thoughtful about my purchases. So it still comes with some money. Um, but yeah, thinking about like my fun money, um, if I want to make that stationary purchase, it's pretty expensive. And if I am pretty successful with this low buy, I'd be way more comfortable making that purchase. I've been thinking about this like for weeks and it's pretty uncomfortable. It's a very large amount of money. Um, yeah, there's like a lot of return on investment for it, but I'm not sure it needs to be that high. So I think this low buy will also make me reflect on how much I really need to spend here. Um, same goes for like the trickle down effect into my other hobbies. Like I'm hoping to not spend any more money on um, like plants, um, little like DIY things. I do need to build a bed frame at some point, but like there are some things I am hoping um, Re reframing my relationship with indie perfume is hopefully going to trickle down into other things. Like I don't, I don't need more candles. Um, I think I'm good for indie skincare and hair products for at least until the rest of the year. Um, again, there's going to be a lot of sales that probably tempt me on Black Friday, but I think I'm going to try skipping all of them if I possibly can. Um, I'm going to do my best. So again, I'm just going to probably check in with myself pretty frequently. Um, it's nice being like actively aware uh, of these issues uh, to a certain extent. So I'm just gonna check in with myself and make, I guess, self-improvement my hobby for the next little bit. Um, and self-improvement in a way that is extremely limited in terms of financial funds. Have notebooks, have pens, etc. cetera, um, with the exception of this order, which I think I'm gonna try to whittle down. I don't think I need to hit free shipping. 
it's okay to like not buy a fifty dollar like item to hit free shipping unless i you know for some reason someone else in my life really wants it and i can get free shipping it naturally um, but i don't think i need to hit it by myself and i don't think i need to justify buying gifts to hit that free shipping because like that's a little it's it doesn't feel like a gift anymore right if it's really for me to justify how i feel unless again something is perfect there yeah i don't need to do that uh yeah yeah and i'm not gonna write any perfume reviews just during this time like no point putting in pressure um i'll probably get really salty about it really fast uh, so i think my hope is um so my hope is that a two month low buy on indie perfumes will reset or like reframe uh, all, all my hobby purchases yeah yeah I think that's what I'm hoping for <laughs>